let us consider the example of compound interest right uh, something that was a little difficult for us to understand in our primary school days at least i found it difficult to understand <laughs> I, I still don't know the formula for compound interest it's some p into 1 plus r to the power of um, t, uh, p into 1 plus r by 100 whole to the power of t or something like that anyways I, i'm not going to bore you with the uh, formula for compound interest of course it's not boring it's interesting but then let's see some basic aspects of compound interest all right so assuming you have 2000 rupees and at the end of first year it compounds at the end of second year again that gets compounded third year that again gets compounded let's assume this is a 10 percent interest okay a easy way to see this is at the end of first year you 2000 becomes 2000 times 10 percent the easy way to calculate it is like this all right so this will be equal to how much 2200 if i'm not wrong all right 2000 added 10 percent so a good way to write that is this as you know you know so uh, all i'm trying to say here is this is 1 plus 10 by 100 that i have directly written as 1.1 .1. that's an easy thing on the mind to write it like that okay fine so because i like writing it that way i'm forcing you all to think that way <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> sorry for imposing that on you people so what's at the end of second year whatever you had at the end of the first year whatever that money was 10 percent of that gets compounded it is 1.1 .1 times your 2200 what is that if i'm not wrong it is two four two zero right you can calculate and see right and at the end of third year it is simply this 2000 into 1.1 into 1.1 whatever that was at the end of first year second year rather right at the end of second year whatever you had and that thing gets compounded which is times 1.1 whatever this is okay so it is 2420 times 1.1 whatever answer you get you write it here but then that is not that is not what i'm here for i'm not i'm not calculating the final answer but i would like to see that here you have a function f right at the end of first year it gives you this much right 2000 into 1.1 at the end of second year let me call that f of 2 instead of uh, 1 i'll say f1 instead of 2 i'll say f of 2 and so on. okay so f of 2 will be whatever you had as f of 1 which is at the end of one year this stands for year as you can see let me use i'm just using some other ink so that this stands for end of first year okay similarly end of second year and so on the language of let's say mathematical functions this is simply so much into whatever was here you know into 1.1 of this so f of 3 is equal to 2000 into 1.1 into 1.1 whatever that was at the end of second year times 1.1 this is all you mean by compound interest right as simple as that and this leads to that formula whatever i was telling you you know p into 1 plus r to the power of 100 p into 1 plus r by 100 whole to the power of t um i hope i'm right there so uh, the, the the formula of component in fact you can derive it here as you can see the years are getting multiplied here you know p into 1 plus r by 100 r is 10 10 by 100 whole to the power of t is the time three years anyways that's not important for us we go on like this do you observe something f of n is equal to in english what does this mean at the end of n years n whatever n is what is the amount that you will get it is simply your 2000 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 sometimes right i don't want to write it like this for different reasons i would like to be a little stylish and i'll say whatever you will get at the end of n years is whatever you get at the end of n minus 1 years times 
1.1 pause for a minute stare at the screen stare at this properly for a minute let me box this for a reason that it's very important and also interesting okay so f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 times 1.1 this is multiplication and this is decimal 1.1 okay don't get confused so to to tell you what f is i am using f okay so to tell you how to compute f of n i'll ask you you compute and give me what is f of n minus 1 and i'll multiply 1.1 to it okay so there are many instances you where you'll encounter things like this all right i'll give you another instance what is the sum of n numbers sum of n numbers is sum of n minus 1 numbers plus the number n now if you're finding this not so easy on your mind don't worry at all this is total common sense right so uh, when we write it like this it becomes very complicated as i keep saying uh, you know mathematical statements are common sense complicated <laughs> that's all once you see the common sense part of it it becomes very clear to you right sum of n equals sum of n minus 1 plus n right similarly if you know what is factorial what is factorial 10 factorial equals 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 right that's what you mean by 10 factorial so what do you mean by n factorial in general it is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 the same thing you know the concept of this 10 factorial i'm, I'm writing it as n factorial right so if you haven't seen this don't worry you can always look up or don't break your head much about factorials it's, it's not important at least at this point of time n minus 3 so on up to again whatever 3 into 2 into 1 at the end this is what you mean by factorial okay but let me write this neatly maybe with a different ink factorial of a number n is factorial of a number 1 less you see what's happening factorial n is 10 factorial is 9 factorial you see this entire thing entire thing 9 factorial times 10 it can be seen like that you see so fact of n is fact of n minus 1 times this entire thing times times What is it times n correct you can specify you can define a function by using the same function okay please make a note of these three things this is one box thing and the next box thing would be this for me sum of n numbers and then let's say factorial all right i would like to take these three things and so just for just for uh, the sake of clarity let me remove the other parts quickly and let me retain the three stuff here so uh, as, as you can see in one page i am showing these three things okay look at it let me remove the grid line so that it's clear to you people okay okay so let us take a deeper dive into what has this to do with our programming learning we are learning python right what is we have we even even saw what are functions this week right what has this to do with what we have shown you so far in the past few lectures right so let me go ahead and then code in my next video and try to tell you what am i after why did i explain this concept to you okay what has this to do with programming using functions you have functions here too point to be noted is to define a function you can use another function the same function you can use here function sometimes can be defined by itself right okay perfect so let's now go ahead and then try to see what has this to do with programming.